Uh, we see uh, many opportunities for the rest of 2020. Um, we are, of course, a bottom-up, fundamental, value-driven house. Uh, the st global stock markets around the world uh, are very extreme at the moment. We have had a very large outperformance by the US market over all other markets in the world. And we've also had large outperformance of certain sectors, particularly growth and quality. Uh, the US market and growth and quality sectors in general are now trading at record high valuations. Uh, Templeton focuses elsewhere and um, we're a value manager and we're seeing with these extremes in the market we're seeing a, a lot of opportunities elsewhere so we're quite excited about that. All of our analysts around the world are producing research on companies that we view as uh, under value, taking a long-term view uh, and many of these companies are finding our way into the portfolio. So overall market's quite mixed, but we're seeing, uh, for our investment style, we're seeing an enormous amount of opportunities. I'd like to give you two examples of how we're positioned in the portfolio. Um, the first one is a position that we've had in place for a number of years now. Uh, and the second one is a bit more recent, something that uh, we're building in the portfolio more recently. The first one is in regard to Europe and, and specifically European banks. European banking sector has been heavily out of favour since the global financial crisis and as such the sector uh, in general is trading at uh, trough valuations and we think the market is not recognising some of the improvements across the sector and some of the, and particularly in certain banks that have improved their fundamentals and the market has so far has uh, ignored that and we think there's a real opportunity there. Um, th this position has been in place for, in our portfolio for a number of years and uh, through the second half of 2019, this sector and particularly the stocks that we own within the sector in the portfolio have started to perform much better. Uh, and we expect that to continue and we expect the, the, this uh, positions to add much value to our portfolio over the next year or two. The second area I'd like to bring to your attention is in relation to Japan. It's a more recent initiative uh, for the portfolios. Japan is a market that historically has had a poor shareholder return focus. Uh, but that's uh, all, all changing uh, and it's been directed by the government, which we think is very significant in Japan. Um, our analysts have been able to come up with many bottom-up ideas uh, that we view as very attractive in a world where, um, particularly in the US and growth and quality sectors are very expensive. We're able to find very attractively valued Japanese companies that we think offer a lot of upside in, in, in the, the coming years. Um, and a number of these companies have found their way into the portfolio in, in the last uh, quarter or two. And we expect to increase uh, Japanese exposure for the rest of 2020. Two stocks I'd like to bring to your attention that we're quite excited about. The first one is a European bank. As I mentioned before, the European banking sector has been very much out of favour since the global financial crisis and as such is very attractively valued in our view. The best European bank uh, to us is the French bank BNP, a very well diversified bank that has restructured well since the global financial crisis and is improving its fundamentals and we're quite excited about its valuation. It trades at a 0.6 to 0.7 times book, which is at a big discount to uh, most other global banks, has a dividend yield of above 7% and we don't think that this valuation that's pricing in any good news whatsoever and we see a lot of improvement in fundamentals going forward. So we're quite excited about that stock. The second stock I'd like to bring to your attention is Korean company Samsung Electronics, a company with a well-known brand around the world. Samsung Electronics uh, has a global leading position in three businesses, semiconductor memory, uh, smartphone, and also display. Uh, Samsung is uh, a stock to us that is very attractively valued, given the leading position in those core businesses. Is also a stock that's now paying a dividend yield of above 3%. That is relevant and interesting to us because the Korean market historically is not a high dividend paying market. So we're seeing a lot of positive fundamental change for Korean corporates that are starting to pay out their cash on their balance sheets, which are generally very strong, in the form of dividends. And we think that's an ongoing driver of the share price. 